Good morning everyone. My name is Ankur Zhaveri and today I'm going to talk about how to communicate effectively and why effective communication is important in your personal and professional growth. So before I move further, let me clarify that effective communication does not mean speaking fluent English. Aap Hindi mein bhi apni baat kaafi impactful tarike se rakh sakte. So jo bhi aaj mein aapke saath share karne wala hoon, that is going to be equally applicable to both English and Hindi communication. Aur jo bhi mein aapke saath share karne wala hoon, that is based on my own personal and professional experience working at BCG, working at OU and by observing my own friends and other leaders who have been great orators. With that out of order, let's just quickly move to how to communicate effectively. So communication is a component which is composing of two parts. Number one, the presenter who is speaking, who is telling and the second is the content. So along the similar lines, I have also structured our discussion in two main headers. How to structure the presenter or the presentation and how to structure the content. So let's start with structuring the presentation. So there are four items that I have identified that you should keep in mind while trying to improve your presentation skills. Number one is that speak slowly, loudly, clearly and you should take occasional pauses in between to make it more impactful. Number two is that modulate your voice so that the audience does not get bored and you can emphasize on the important topics in between. Number three is use hand gestures. U utilizing hand gestures make your communication very, very effective. And number four is that you should always maintain eye contact and even in heated arguments, you should always remain calm. So let's start with the first one, which is to speak loudly, clearly, firmly and slowly and also incorporating pauses in your communication. A communication is a method in which you require your audience to listen to interpret and analyze what you're saying for them to absorb it fully. So if you speak loudly and clearly, your audience will be able to hear it very properly. Now let's move to the second part, which is to speak slowly as well as taking occasional pauses. So while speaking slowly and using pauses, there are three benefits that come out of it. Number one is that the audience gets adequate amount of time to analyze and assimilate a new topic and they will be able to retain it better. Number two is that you get adequate amount of time during the presentation to think on the go how to deliver the content more structurally and also you can think of facts and examples to present during the communication which will make your delivery much more impactful. And number three is that pauses add an element of surprise. You would have seen major presenters for example the Steve Jobs of Apple or let's say our own Prime Minister Mr. Modi ji or let's say our previous Prime Minister Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji all of them have spoken very clearly loudly and have incorporated pauses effectively to make their communication very very impactful. Let's just move to the second part which is to modulate your voice to keep your audience engaged. Now if you speak the entire conversation into a single tone it will make your audience get bored. So you should always modulate your voice. It gives two benefits. Number one is that you can utilize your modulation to focus on specific parts of the conversation. And second is that it keeps the audience attention level at a higher scale. So they are able to analyze and understand what you are trying to communicate in a much better fashion. Now let's come to the third point, which is utilizing hand gestures, but not incorporating a lot of unnecessary movement into the communication. Hand gesture are very impactful because it adds impact as well as expression into what you're trying to deliver. You can utilize your gestures to direct your audience that where they should divert their focus on and also sometimes subconsciously audience remember part of the conversation or communication by associating that with a particular gesture. At the same time, you should avoid unnecessary movement because as hand gestures engages the audience unnecessary movement distracts them. If you move on the stage or let's say in the meeting room from one point to another continuously, then your audience does not know whether they should focus on the communication or the discussion that is happening or they should focus on where you are standing. So you should definitely avoid unnecessary movement. Now with this we come to our fourth and final point, which is to maintain eye contact and staying calm even in heated arguments. Eye contact is very important because it converts a group discussion into a one-to-one -one conversation. Your audience is able to engage with you because you are talking to them. 
so try to gradually look at the every section of audience and engage into a conversation with them so that they feel connected at the same time you must always stay calm even if there is a heated argument because once you get into an argument a communication or a discussion gets converted into a one sided argument your audience loses interest in you and the overall process of the communication becomes highly ineffective so these four ideas you could try to incorporate into your presentation style and i'm very sure that you will start seeing improvement now presentation is only half part of the equation content delivery is another very important aspect that we should focus on now similar to the four points that i mentioned into structuring your presentation there will be four points that i'll be mentioning into structuring your content number 1 is that you should always mention at the beginning of the communication how many points you are going to mention like i did in my example that i am going to mention four points each under the two headers number 2 is that for content generation you could utilize frameworks such as pestel and rocd which i am going to discuss further down the line number 3 is that always use facts to overpower judgments and arguments because facts are facts and number 4 is that you could utilize slides or visual aids to engage the audience and enrich your communication so these point four points i am going to elaborate one by one let's start with the first one which is to structure your overall content into points and mention at the beginning of the communication itself that what you are going to deliver in how many points there are two benefits that come out of it number one is that for you it adds a nature of self discipline that you have to be short and succinct and it also helps your audience to understand that there are four or five points that are going to come and the agenda that is being discussed right now belongs to the first point so they can understand and they can effectively absorb better let's come to the second point which is to utilize framework for content generation now effective content is very important for any audience to get engaged let's start with pestel framework so pestel stands for political economic social technological environmental and legal so you could evaluate these six aspects of any generic topic to come up with a very rich content i have tried to present an example here which is related to a very recent tragedy which is the odi impact of odisha train accident you could analyze it across the six buckets that I, that, that i just mentioned let's start with political you could see that who will take the political responsibility will there be any resignations happening out of it what will be the impact that it will be causing on the next election coming to second which is economic what is the loss it has caused to the people who have suffered what is the loss it has caused to the government and what will be the compensation that government is going to make coming to the social aspect which is the large loss of life has happened into it in the tune of 280 plus people there is impact on the social infrastructure hospitals are overburdened even schools are being used as mortuary how it will impact the social fabric of the society coming to the technical technological aspect which is key what was the reason responsible for this accident to happen is the new kavach technology even useful coming to environmental aspect that is there any loss to environment that has happened due to the train accident in the balasore area and last is the legal aspect that will there be any suits or claims happening against the government on account of this train accident so you could utilize pestel framework in a similar manner in any of the generic topics that you are going to encounter and you could produce very enriching content and large ss now let's move to the second part which is the rocd framework so this is the framework that i have evolved as part of my engagement at boston consulting group and also my times at oi you would have heard of different frameworks like 3c and 4p which we are encounter in marketing but i have identified that value chain analysis and rocd framework is more impactful now rocd stands for revenue operational efficiency cost and delight now let's again try with an example is ola going to tier 4 city beneficial from revenue aspect we will analyze what is the demand in tier tier 4 markets what is the total addressable market what is the revenue potential from operational perspective we will look how many franchise we have to open how many manpower we will to hire we will have to hire how the operations of product delivery will happen how will franchise operation happen etc etc moving to the cost aspect 
what is the investment that needs to be made how will it impact the cash flow what is the roi of the investment that is exactly what we have to see coming to the last part which is customer delight which is very important and responsible for many companies growth is that whether opening a store in tier 4 city will make the customer of tier 4 city more uh, happy whether the service experience of that particular customer will be more beneficial so these are the aspects that you could analyze in any business situation to come up with impactful items that you can use in your discussions now let's move to the third point which is after content generation if you get into arguments how do you overpower and take control of the discussion so you should always use facts to come out of such arguments again let's corroborate this with an example there has been an argument going on recently regarding the new parliament that whether placing wedding vedic idols in a democratic parliament right or wrong let's use a fact the samvidhan kaksh of the parliament illustrates the journey of india from ancient to modern and almost 100% account of the ancient indian history comes from vedas so imagining a chamber illustrating indian history without mentions of vedas will not be possible and this is a fact that you can utilize to illustrate why your point is right with this comes the fourth and the final point which is utilizing visual aids like slides or written content to engage your audience as well as making your communication more impactful and you have observed that in this conversation or discussion also i have utilized written content and slides to present what i'm trying to say and make it more easier for you to follow so that's it guys i hope that these eight points that i mentioned across the two headers will help you structure your communication better and will help you present more effectively with that i'll take leave and wish you all the best thank you